back to Stylish Ninja YouTube channel. I want to say thank you to all of my subscribers. Thank you so much for subscribing to Stylish Ninja YouTube channel for the love, for the support. I appreciate each and every one of you that have supported Stylish Ninja YouTube channel. I actually, don't take it for granted. Okay, so thank you so much. Okay, so if you are new to my channel, this is the first time of you coming across Stylish Ninja YouTube channel. You are highly, highly, highly and very, 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 very welcome. Yes, you are actually really, really welcome. And if you have not subscribed already, I will appreciate if you hit on the subscribe button and then hit on the bell also to get an update. So that bell, you see that bell, they just click the bell also. So you get an update. So whenever I upload a new video, you're going to be among the first people that is going to see the video. Pam. So that's it. And then you can also follow me on all of my social media platforms. Uh, Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, all at Stylish Niger. So once you just type Stylish Niger, Pam, you are going to see me. Okay, so that's that. So if you want to register for our online classes, which we normally do every month, so you can see my number scrolling through the screen, just send me a message on WhatsApp. Presently, we have about seven um, classes. We have the padded blouse. For those of you that want to learn how to sew padded um, Igbo blouse, we have an intermediate class for people that can sew already and then they want to improve. We also have a beginner's class, that's like the first class. And then we have a ready to wear for those people that want to go into Ankara business, I want to sew like Ankara dresses and then sell online. And then we have an advanced class. We also have a corset class for people that want to learn how to sew perfectly sewn corset. And then we have a trouser and a jumpsuit class. So these are the classes. Just send me a message on WhatsApp and then I'll give you the details of the how the classes are run okay so now let's get started i'm just so really 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 so excited i'm really excited here okay so in today's video i'm going to be showing you how to cut and sew a, a fish cow kaftan yes a fish cow kaftan so you can see this dress is really gorgeous do you know immediately i saw this dress i said no this is a must have for me so i just um went out got a fabric you know, i told you guys i had i bought a lot of fabrics uh -huh. So these are like sample fabric. I bought them in the market here in Abuja. For those of you that are in Abuja, so um, the fabric is just so beautiful. They are so lovely. Enough of that. So <laughs> let's, let's just get started. So that's what we are going to do today. So I have a black satin here that I'm going to use to mix mix it up. It's like a satin, but the truth is I really don't know. It's, the, the fabric is beautiful. It, the, this part is shiny, and then this part is a little bit dull. Okay, so now I'm going, just going to explain how this is being done. It is a very simple way. This is what I did earlier on, just like a rough. So I'm going to explain it, how this is being done. So I'm just going to use the papers and illustrations so it will be easy for us to understand. So, for instance, this is the amount of fabric that you want to use to cut out your front piece. So you, so even though the dress does not have a zipper, but you are going to cut them because you are going to join it on the shoulder. Line. So you fold your front piece like this into two and then we're going to add all of our lines So the first line we're going to add is our shoulder line So this is our shoulder line and then the next line you are going to add is your waist measurement So that's where that black fabric is so for the waist measurement I'm just going to stop here and then the next line you are going to add to this dress the next line you are going to add is your your knee lines, your below the knee. If you watch my video on how to sew a fish skirt, in order for you to get that perfect curve, you need to go below the knee. So the curve is not really from the knee, it's below the knee. So you mark your below the knee uh, measurement. That's from your shoulder to down up. You can do two inches below your knee, your actual knee measurement to get your below the knee measurement. You mark it like this. So these are the lines and then the down part. So the next thing you are going to include, you include your neckline, include the neckline, and then for the knee measurement, you are going to mark the knee. So, uh, sorry, the first measurement that you are going to use is your shoulder, is your sleeve measurement. So you see that that sleeve is a long sleeve. It's got to her wrist. So this is the center back. So because your fabric is folded into two, this is the center back. So from this point, you are going to measure to the to where you want your sleeve measurement to be that's from your the center of your back for instance as i'm sitting now this part of the, the back uh -huh, so that's where you measure to get your sleeve length so after getting so this is this sleeve length that is what will form as the whole base of this dress that is going to be the width that is going, going to be everything so that is what you will fold your fabric with your your sleeve measurement and then once you've gotten the sleeve measurement, you are going to stop there. And then we'll come back to the knee 
measurement. So from this knee measurement, depends on how slim you want it to be. You can actually use your hip measurement. That's your actual hip measurement. For instance, my hip is 40 inches. So you know when we divide into four, I'm going to use 10. So you can use eight inches just the same way we did on the fish sketch. You, so I'm going to drop that video down for those that have not seen it. So you understand everything that was saying. So you use eight inches now because you just remove two inches from your actual hip. And then you mark it on this below the knee line. And then from this below the knee line, you are going to measure how wide you actually want the down of your skirt to be. So it depends on how the length, and then you mark the length. And then the next thing is just for you to form your curve. You understand? Just the way you form your feet skirt. You form it a nice length to that point. So when you form it to that point, and then the next thing from this part like this, you are going to create a curve. So I'll use dotted lines. You are creating like a curve, just like a curve to come to this part that's on the edge of your dress. You're just going to create a curve like this. Depends on how big the curve is. That is what will form the fullness of the dress. So you create the curve. After creating the curve, you get it back to this point. So from this point to this point, if you are sewing a normal regular cow dress, you know your opening for your sleeve. Some can use 15, some can use 9. Depends on your sleeve opening. So, but for this, since it is the wrist measurement, what you are going to do, you are going to use your round sleeve measurement, as in your round sleeve measurement on this part. That's what you will use to open this point part. So you open it a tiny bit because you know the wrist measurement is not really big like that. You measure, you open. So the whole of this part now you are going to stitch. See, it's a simple dress. You stitch it like this. And then stitch it to this point and then this part you are going to have an opening you are going to have an opening so that is where your sleeve will stay so now we're going to cut out so you cut out your neckline so this is the part where we're going to sew this the belt so for this part where we're going to attach the belt you are going to use your your um waistline measurement so for instance your waist let me say your waist is a uh, 36 that's nine inches so from this you divide into four you mark this point you just note it just note it down so that's where i'm going to when we get to that part we're going to attach a rope the rope there's a way we're going to attach the sash that we're going to make it with this um, black fabric there's a way we're going to attach it inside of it so you you are going to use your round waist measurement so i hope i'm not wasting so much time and then we'll cut out like this so this whole of this part is going to, we're going to stitch the whole of this part, but we'll create our opening here and then the neckline. And then this is the part where we're going to attach our sash for the waist measurement or the rope, depends on what you choose to call it. So you can see the dress is looking like what we have on the picture. Okay, so once you get, catch this explanation, the whole dress is done. So now I'm going to fold my fabric. So I actually have five yards of fabric here, but I think I'm going to use about four yards of fabric so what i'm going to do now i'm going to take out one yard of fabric and then the other four yards i'm going to divide it into two from the center and then i'll place my fabric on the table okay so i folded my fabric into four so since the dress does not have a zipper i'm going to cut them together but i'm going to do some explanation so for the top of my own so you see that kimono like uh, stuff in front of that center Top, that's the top i don't like it so i'm not going to add it so what i'm going to do i'm just going to do a v neckline for mine so for this you can change it up you can do a round neckline depends on what you want so for mine i'm going to do a v neckline for the front and then a high round neckline for the back then I, at the end of the day i'm going to pipe it with the satin to still bring that black effect to that top part so the first thing i'm going to do now like i explained earlier the, the sleeve measurement so this is my center back now from this point so i'm using 28 inches on my sleeve so this is 28 inches so this is just 30 inches so I, since i just decided to leave the air transfer of trimming it out so this is my 28 inches so these ones are going to be like hemming allowance and like stitching allowance for it so i'm just going to leave it that way the next thing i'm going to measure now is from this point that's this point to that part where we're going to add the sash that's the rope which is 16 inches so from my shoulder to that point it's going to be 16 inches 
So this is my 16 inches. So the first thing I'm going to slope this part for my shoulder slope because of the kind of caftan that it is. I'm going to be using dropping it with two inches. So this is two inches. So these two inches, I'm going to float it into the neckline point like this. So I'm just going to float it into this point. So if you notice, I'm dropping with two inches instead of the regular one inch. So from this point, I'll mark my 16 inches for that center. And then the next length I'm going to mark is my knee, below my knee measurement, like I explained earlier, which is 43. So this is 43 inches. So I'm going to rule out the line so you see them properly. So because I'm trying to capture the hole and table, so I'm going to do this bit by bit. So the full length of the dress is actually 60 inches. So let's work with the shoulder line first. So I've ruled the shoulder slope line, so I'm going to open it up now. So I've cut out the shoulder slope. So the next thing I'm going to do now, I'm going to add the neckline. So for the neckline, so like I said, for the neckline, I'm going to use, I'm going to do a V neckline for my front bodies. And then the back, I'm going to do a round neckline. So I'm going to come to this point. So I want you to see it properly. I'll just pull and adjust. So for the neckline, I'm going to come from this point to create out my neckline. So I'll use a three inches for my neckline, my width. You can use two, three point five. So this is the width. And then the length, that's the depth of the my front neckline. I'm going to be making use of eight inches. So like I normally say in all of my videos, you can always measure yourself if you don't want it to be too deep. So I'm going to use 8 inches. So this is the depth of 8 inches. So from this point, I'm just going to create like a V into this point like this. So I hope you can see it. I'm just trying to adjust. So I'll create it into this point like this. And then for the back neckline, I want the back neckline to be high. So for the back neckline, I'm going to use one inch for my back neckline. So I'm, I'll curve the back neckline like this. So this is the back neckline, and then this is the front neckline. So like I said, I don't want that kimono stuff. If you want that kimono stuff, that means you have to open from this point to this point to attach that black as you cut this point open. And then you cut out about one inch from this point. You take it out and then attach, you create a collar, straight, just a straight strap and then attach it back. So it is a simple process, but I don't want it, I don't like it. So I'm just going to go to do what I want. So I'll cut out the back neckline first. Okay, so I've cut out the back neckline, so I have to readjust my camera. I've cut out the back neckline, like I said, I use one inch for the back and then this is eight inches for the front. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take out my pins so that I'll cut out the front neckline. So you see the front neckline, so it's placed back together. So I'm going to cut it out right now. So this is like a, something like a plunging thing. So that's what I'm trying to achieve. Not like a very sharp thing. So you see what I have now. So I'm going to fold back. So we'll continue. Okay, so I've readjusted my camera, so I've pinned them together normally. So this is my waistline, so I want you to note that that's my waistline, which I use 16 inches for. So I just marked it from this point to this point. So this measurement that I have is my waist measurement. My waist measurement is 32, so when you divide 32 into 4, you have 8 inches. Sorry, 32 inches. When you divide 32 into 4, you have 8 inches, so this is the 8 inches, just the same way you impute your measurement. So I just marked it and then stopped here. So this is the part where we are going to add that sash, that rope to. So that's why I indicated it. So the next thing we are going to come to the knee measurement. So my um, normally my hip measurement would have been around this point. But since I'm not adding my hip measurement, I'm just going to take that hip measurement. I'm going to put it on this knee measurement. So you can, like I explained earlier, you can decide to reduce it. You understand you can take out two inches but because my fabric is not really stretchy if i do that i will not be able to walk but if you are using a very stretchy fabric you can reduce it because you are not going to have any friction when you try to move 
Okay, so I'm just I'm just going to bring my hip measurement, which is 10, because it is 40. I'm going to insert it here on those points like this. And then I'm going to add, I'm going to still add allowance to it. Just in case it is not too tight. So if it is if after sewing, if I find out that it is um, too loose, I can I can reduce it instead of I don't have enough fabric. So that's why I added another two inches to it. So the next thing I'm going to do now from this point, I'm just going to make like a big circle. You understand? Just like a big circle like this to come to this point. So when we're done with this, we'll work on the fish part of the dress. So I hope you can see it. Okay, so like I said, so from this point, I'm just going to create a curve like this. So it is a simple, I'm just going to do a simple freehand. If I don't like the shape, I can decide to redo it again. So you see what I have. So it is this curve, that is what will give the dress that curve, that balloon like, that cowl effect. So you can see what I have. So I'm just trying to check it. If I like it, I continue. If I don't like it, so I'll get it up to this point like this. So I think I like the curve that I have. So note, you know my wrist measurement. I'm going to create an opening here. So for the opening that I'm going to create, I'm going to create about 10 inches opening. So that is going to be 5. So from this point to this 5 inches, I'm not going to stitch it, so I'm going to notch it. Mm -hmm. So from here to here, now it's going to be open. That's where my sleeve will enter from. So now we're done with the top part. So now let's, I need to readjust the camera. So let's um work on the down part of the dress. Okay, so the next thing now, like I told you earlier on, I said the full length of my dress is 60 inches. So this is my 60 inches here. So I'm going to add extra allowance of about, just about two inches, just for, for the hemming part. So the next thing we're going to do now, the fish part of our skirt, we're going to measure how wide you want the down of your skirt to be. So for mine, because I, because I want it to flow very well, I'm going to use as much as 20, 20 between 20 to 22 inches for the down part of my, of the kaftan, because I want it to be very wide and fine. So I'll use about 22 inches on this down part. So you can even do more. I think I'll let me just do 23. So if it is too wide, I can trim it. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do now, from this point now, I'm going to create a curve like this. To come to this point like this. We are just going to create like a slope to come to this point like this so you can see it so if you want if you still want it to be your curve if you don't want this the curve to start from this part you can still decide to come in like this so it depends on what you want and then but like i said since my fabric is not a stretchy fabric i cannot do this because if i do this i might find it difficult to be able to walk and since i don't want to add a slit to the back of the dress but if you want to add a slit, you can curve it however you want to and then add a slit at the back. So I'm just going to go, I'm just going to maintain my original line and then curve it to this part like this, just to create the fish effect on it. So you can see, so I'm going to cut it out right now. Okay, so I finished cutting. So I've cut out everything. So I think it's okay. So like I so the next thing I'm going to do now, like I said, for on this part I'm using my waist measurement. So this is the inside. So I really need this measurement. This measurement is like key. Okay, so I'm going to turn the other side and repeat the measurement on it also because I need to get I need to get the point right so I'll mark my 8 inches which is for my waist 32 so I'll mark it here like this and then I'll just rule it on the straight line also 
Okay. So the next thing we are going to do now, we will go and stitch it. Okay, so I'll show you how we are going to stitch this. It is a very simple, this is a very simple project, actually. Make sure you pin. You know when you are working with such all this kind of fabrics, you have to pin. Okay, so here's what we are going to do. I'm going to take it now to my machine. First, I'm going to join it on the shoulder. The shoulder line. I'll join the shoulder part and then I'll join the shoulder part. Okay, so after joining the shoulder part, I'm going to cut out a fabric. Just a slim black fabric. I'm going to use it to pipe the neckline. So I'll pipe it that the back, the black is going to show in front of it. So I'm just going to go ahead. I'll go and stitch it. Join the shoulder and then pipe the neckline. So in case you don't know how to pipe, I, I think I have a video of it. But I, I'm still going to show you a part of it. I just don't want so the major part that is where I'm making um that is where I'm putting emphasis so you understand those parts. So I'll join the shoulder, pipe the neckline, and then I'll cut out the belt now that I'm going to attach to this part, this point. Now I'm going to attach it. So I'm going to I'm going to cut out the amount of fabric and then I'll explain to you. Okay, so I've cut out a pieces of uh, fabric that I'm going to use. So I'll give you the dimensions that I use. So for this, the length, that's the full length is um, 56 inches. And then what I have, the width that I'm using here is about 6 inches. So both of them are the same. So I cut out two pieces. So what I'm going to do, I'll take it to my machine and then I'm going to sew and turn. I'm just going to go and sew them separately. I'm not joining them. I'll sew them, turn them, and then iron them out. So this is for this. And then this second one is the one I'm going to use for my neck piping. So I cut this. This is about two inches. So you can use a bias. You can use a cutting bias also. So this is what I'm going to use. And then this I'm going to sew and turn. I'm going to make use of it. So if I try it, if it is okay, I'll show you. But if it is not okay, I'll just take it out. I'm just trying to try something. Okay, so I'll go over now. Okay, so I have finished teaching. So now for the neckline, I'm going to explain what I did for it. So you can see the V is laying flat. So in order for you to have a straight flat V like this, you have to hold it inside. So you could see, though it is not obvious, but you have to, to do like a little hold. So what I did is, Normal piping, I, I just cut open the front neckline. Just, I just cut it open to about one and a half inches. So to, to enable me pipe it properly. So after piping, so you see I did not cut it out because I wanted to show you. So after piping it, I now just held it so you can see, just, just hold it in. So that is what will help your V to relax. So now I'm just going to cut this off now. The excess, so I just cut it off. So it helps, it actually helps your V to sit and relax well. So you, at the end of the day, so you see what you have. So you just have something like a little stitch here, a little line, which is not obvious. It is very, very negligible. So that is the only way you are going to get your V to sit flat. If you don't do it like that, you have to open it a little bit and then sew your piping. And then you, you after sewing everything, you just hold it back, just like I explained. Okay. I really don't want much emphasis on that. So the video is taking so much time. So the next thing, so I finished teaching all of the sides of my cow um, kaftan, our fish cow kaftan. So you remember the lines that I made earlier, that's the waist measurement. Sorry, the, the waist, yeah. Okay, so you remember the waist measurement, that's this waist measurement. Here, from here to here. So what I did, I just increased, I increased it by, so I really, I didn't want to, you know mine is 16 inches, so I didn't want to use 16, so I added one, two inches to it. So, so that is what you have here. That's from this point now, to this other side. So at the end of the day, that point, that's this exact point here that I have. I made a notch on it, that's like a simple notch, so you can see, it's just like an, I created an opening. I just use my blade to create an opening. For this, you have to be very, 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 very careful. I just created this a little bit rough, so I'm going to 
um, cover it up with a small applique once I'm done. So I created a notch here. That's like an opening, like a one inch opening. So you can see the other one also. So I created the two opening on the side side. This opening that I'm talking about now is here. It's here and here. So I created the opening here and here for my for, for my waist. So that, that's where I'm going to pass my tie through my sash. So these are the sash that I made. So these are the two sash. So both of them, like I said, I've explained the measurement to you before initially. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the center. So I'm going to use one. I'm going to pass one through. And then the other one is going to be on top. So this is the one that is going to be on top. So I'm just trying to, to do something. I just want you to see what I'm trying to do. So I open this one. So this is the one I'm going to pass through these two points. So I'm, I just took the center and then this one, I'm going to put this on top of this point. So I'm just putting it on top. I'll pin it together. This is just to create a bow on top. So that's the essence of this one that I'm, I'm, I'm putting on top. You can decide not to put it. You can decide not to put it. Okay, let me take it out in order not to confuse you. Let's do it one on one. Let's take it out. So let's just keep this on the side. So now the next thing, let's pass this. So this sash, I'm going to pass it through this point now. Remember the opening that I did here? I'm just going to pass it through. And then do the same thing to the other one. Okay, so after passing it in, this is what how it will look like so now what i'm going to do now i'm going to get the center just like i explained earlier i'll get the center of this part and then i'm going to pin this you remember this one that i was trying to pin on it i'll just pin it so i'm going to use a notch i'm going to do like a top stitch on it so, so i'm just using this So after putting that there, you are going to tie this however you want to tie, however you want to tie, you want to tie it. I'm trying to tie it both, seriously. <laughs> so you have your bow at the front. Of your dress so the next thing i'm going to place this on the mannequin and then we're going to tie it from the inside you tie it to fit into your body so that is what will give it that fitting so earlier on like i told you this part i actually cut this one out earlier but i've not i just showed i've not turned it so for this if you want to if you want to add a bow to the neckline so you remember this part that i cut open for the for the v neckline you can make something slim like this also, and then you pin it here. So, like I said, I've not turned it. I was trying to turn it. I could not get something like a nail to turn it properly. So, I just left it because I, I don't think I'm going to make use of it though. So, that is why. So, you just do like another top stitch here. And then you can tie this also like a bow just in case you want something like that bow tie that is on the original dress so you see you can you can also do this so you have a bow on top and then you have a bow at the down part of the dress so you can do that so i just decided to share that part but i'm going to take it out i don't want it okay so now i'm going to place this on the mannequin okay so to tie so that was what i was telling you as in for this down part if you are using a stretchy fabric, you can make it as slim as possible. But if you are not using a stretchy fabric, it's going to be a problem. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to, I'm going to just pull this off. So when you put it on, this is what you are going to do. You are going to, 
you are going to take this like this. So you can see. And then you are going to tie it from the inside of your dress. You tie it into your body to fit into your body. So After time, you drop it and then you arrange this. So you just use your hands to pull it. So you see how it is looking. It is looking so really beautiful. You would agree with me. So you can see what we have at the end of it. So you see the down part of our dress. It looks like the picture. It actually came out well. So you can see. So this part. For mine, I think this um, part, what I'm going to do, I'm going to use this back black satin. I'm going to pipe the, the sleeve. So thank you so much. So you see the back, I turn the back. So you see how beautiful the back is looking. It's looking so, it's so gorgeous. So thank you so much. If you find this video helpful, I will appreciate if you will hit on the like button. Let me know if you appreciate the video. So thank you so much. I'll see you in my next video. Ciao, it's a wrap.